Today I'm going to show you guys how to add a pattern to clothes in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com seven days a week. Let's say <laughs> where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. We had a really cool episode today for you. It's we're gonna be basically creating a texture for completely from scratch. They're called patterns here in Photoshop. So I'm gonna go show you guys how to source those patterns or how to create your own. We're gonna show you how to like actually make those patterns so you can fill a new layer or you know new document with a completely customizable, repeatable pattern. And then we're gonna take that pattern and we're gonna actually apply it to a piece of clothing and then we're gonna warp it and transform it and you use all kinds of layer effects to make it look super photo real and make it look like it's actually on that piece of clothes. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so our image today we're working on is by Michelle, and she's one of our contest winners from last week's contest. Really cool image, just super simple portrait, but I really like the styling works on it and uh, the lighting, everything is just really, really nice about it. And I thought it would be a perfect time to actually like put a new texture here on her dress. Not that I don't like whatever texture she's got on her dress here, but it's just a great opportunity to show you guys something new. So here's what we're gonna do. You can create your custom patterns really, really easily in Photoshop, or you can find them online. And that's what we're gonna be using today. We're actually gonna be using this houndstooth design, and um, this is from Christina Jewels Design. We'll put a link right down below so you guys can check this out if you want to. Um, basically what I did is I just searched in Google Images, and I, I said like um, seamless or repeatable and uh, you wanna search pattern. So that repeatable part is really interesting. That'll make sure when you tile it, it's gonna, it's gonna not break on every single tile. The tile will be you know, the same on the left as on the right, so it'll actually repeat. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna right click and we're gonna go to copy image or you can hit save image as, and she just says make sure to credit her. So that's what we're doing here. All right, so we're copying the image and I'm gonna hit command N to create a new document and then command V we'll paste that in there. So if you have something, an image already on your clipboard, you can just create a new document in Photoshop and it'll size it accordingly. Okay, so now that we've got this, this is basically our repeating pattern. What I'm gonna go to do is edit and then we're gonna hit define pattern. All right, hound's tooth. There we go. So now we have a hound's tooth pattern in the library of Photoshop. It's basically stuck in there. It's gonna be in there forever until you delete Photoshop or get rid of your preferences files or things like that. So let's just look at one thing real quick. The image size here is 495 pixels by 495 pixels. That's a pretty big pattern. So if I were to go back to my other document and I were to create a new letter, layer and hit fill and then fill with pattern and then you can choose your pattern here. There's a houndstooth pattern right there. And I hit okay. You can see it, it fills it in, but that pattern, it's way too big, right? Like I, I wanna scale this down. So I would hit command T, scale it down but by the time I got it small enough, I don't have enough of the pattern, which is totally annoying. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna create a new document instead. So Command N for new document, and I'm gonna make this 5,000 pixels by 5,000 pixels. Okay, so now I have a much larger source that I can actually work with. So I'm gonna hit Shift Delete, which is the fill. You can choose black, foreground color, whatever you want. You can choose pattern here, and since we defined this as a pattern, now I can actually choose my custom pattern. Let's just go down to this house to pattern that I hit and hit OK, and then it's gonna fill this with that pattern. Okay, so now that we have this pattern filled on a new document, and it's, you know, it's basically, it's a huge, huge pattern, so I can size it correctly and I don't have to worry about running out of space. Now what I'm gonna do is use my Move tool, and I'm gonna hit Shift, and then click and drag from one image to the other. There we go, let's hit OK there, and we can see that <laughs> it is huge but now I can move it around. So if I hit Command T now, remember this image, because we created it on such a larger canvas, it extends out past the canvas, so I can actually shrink it down. So you can, let's just lower the opacity so I can kind of see what I'm doing here. Now I'm gonna hit Command T, and then I'm gonna link the width and the height here, and I'm just gonna scale it down. And this is, you know, really when it's fun, because you can just choose how big or small of a houndstooth pattern you actually want on the piece of clothing. And that looks like it works. So we're gonna hit Enter, and there we go. We are already on our way. So we've got our hands to pattern and it doesn't really look like it's on our subject really well, right? So let me just change the opacity back to 100 and we're gonna try a few things. We're gonna try changing this to soft light. 
Soft light's going to be really good because it's going to actually blend with the original layers and it's going to look a little bit more real. And then let's try lowering our opacity. So here we're at a soft light adjustment layer. And basically, well, you want to choose something that looks like it's blending in reasonably well to your background. So soft light overlay, those things are going to work really well. Um, you could choose to have this like, you know, take away either like you could hit multiply and the whites would go away. You could hit screen and the darks would go away. You do whatever you want. But we're going to stick with soft light for this because this is mostly about getting the pattern in there. OK, so now that our pattern is over top of the image, it, we can't just layer mask this and say done because it doesn't actually it doesn't follow any of the folds of the fabric or anything like that. So to get this done, we're going to be using a lot of the pen tool to make our selections, and we're going to be using a lot of the warp tool to actually warp this fabric in place. So let's start off by the warp tool. Hit Command T on your layer that you actually want to edit. In this case, it's going to be our pattern. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go down to warp. OK, so now this is just like a general warp to kind of start this image off. I'm going to just do things like you know squeeze in the sides and stuff like that. And there we go. This is basically just getting us to a place where it doesn't start off looking like, there we go. It doesn't start off looking like it's uh, you know just completely square. There we go. So it's just going to give it a little bit of shape and texture and things like that. All right, so there's the before. You can see, obviously, that doesn't look real. And the after, let's just zoom in here. It's going to look a little bit more real. OK. So now what we're going to do, we're actually going to make selections based on different parts of the dress. And we'll talk about this for a second before we actually do it. And that's going to help really define the pattern really well and actually make it look like it's affecting the dress. So you can see we have all these different folds in our dress. Let's just choose a color. All right, we have a fold. There's one like right there. There's a fold right there. There's a fold right there, right there. So what I'm deciding basically to do is choose what's going on here with my fabric as like a little bit of a cue as to what I'm going to do with the actual pattern. So you can see this kind of curves down. So this pattern here, I want this to kind of curve down like this as well, what is going to wind up being that pattern. Now this area from here to here kind of curves up. So I want that to kind of curve up right up there. Again, this kind of curves up. So we we'll want the pattern to do this. And this pattern kind of comes down like that. And then this is kind of like a, a nice wave, things like that. So now what we're going to do, we're going to use the pen tool to make some quick selections, and we're just going to warp it. You're going to see it really doesn't take too long. So let's go ahead and make this fact visible again. I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit more just so I can see what I'm doing better. There we are. And now we're going to use the pen tool. So hit P for your pen tool. This is really simple. A lot of people think the pen tool is super complex and you know it's hard to use, but we're just going to make simple selections out of it right now. So I'm going to click right down here to the start of one of my curves. OK, and then we're going to click up here and drag. And you can hold the Control or click the Command key to kind of move any of these points around. So it's going to change the actual shape of your curve. There we go. And that looks good. We're just going to come right up here around to the bottom. All right, and you don't even have to close it off. If you right click and make selection, it's going to, it'll close off any pen tool selection that you already made. So we're going to do that. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say Make Selection. And we're going to feather that by 0.1 pixels. That's just going to make it so it's not like super, super sharp. OK, so now that we've made that a selection, I'm going to hit Command T, right click, and go to Warp. OK, so we are ready to warp this. And I can kind of like push this around. And it's only going to affect that area of the fabric. But there's a lot of stuff in the way. We've got the selection in the way. We've got you know the warp dialog in the way. There's a lot of stuff. And I, just, I don't really want to see it. So I'm going to hit Command H. That's going to hide all that stuff. So I'm still going to be making this change, this uh, warp, but I'm not going to see all that stuff. So here, I'm just going to click right here in the middle, and I'm going to pull up and out a little bit. There we go. Very cool. And when I'm done, I just hit Enter and then Command D to deselect. So you can see there's the before and the after. Now, all we have to do is basically just do the same exact thing a couple more times. So we're going to take care of this area. So I pushed it up earlier because we said we were going to do that. Now we're going to take care of this area. All right. And notice how I'm taking care. This is why I'm using this the pen tool to actually make these selections, because I want to make sure that I actually am following these curves that are on the dress. So now we've made that, selection, made that pen path. I'm going to go to Make Selection, hit OK, and then hit Command T, right click, and go to Warp. Same like we did earlier, and hit Command-H to hide that. 
All right, and we're just gonna push this down a little bit. Pull it up right there, but down here, there we go. And you can kind of like warp it around in here. And what this does is just allows you to like actually choose what it looks like for each different like bit of the fabric. It's just really, really cool. All right, we'll pull it up a little bit there. And hit enter and then command D to deselect. We're gonna do the same thing here. So really just do this a few times. Now on this one, you know, we're basically doing a pencil skirt. So it's a relatively simple example. But if you run like a shirt or anything like that, it'd basically be the same exact steps. The selections you choose would just be a little bit different. But it's all a matter of making your selections and then hitting warp. There we go. And getting everything, all right, getting everything lined up based on where the actual fabric itself is changing. All right, Command T. Forgot to select it. All right, right click, go to make selection. So I'm just doing the same thing over again. So <laughs> in case you guys didn't get it the first time, there we go. All right, and I'm trying to follow, I'm doing my best to follow the fabric down here on the bottom. Now it's probably not gonna be perfect and I know that, but it's, it's gonna, it should look real enough to where, it would, where you, you wouldn't have to look at this twice to be like, is that real? I don't know what's going on there. Um, it should look real enough, all right. Let's make that a selection. Command T, warp that. Command H to hide it. All right, so this is the real key, is to do this for every single bit of like fold and things like that that exist on the dress. And it's gonna take a little while longer, but it's gonna make a big difference. All right, let's go ahead and put a layer mask on that layer. And now, basically I'm just gonna paint black outside of the dress. So. Um, we have our fabric on there and everything looks good, it's sized, but it's covering up her legs and a little bit of the car and things like that. So we just wanna make sure we layer mask it to the, to the actual dress. Now, this is a pretty simple pattern. It's just a houndstooth pattern and I'm using a soft light adjustment layer, which does a really nice job blending into the image. So I don't really have to be super precise with my layer mask here because even if I do overlap, it does a really good job blending in the image and you can't really tell anyway. But um, if you were doing a pattern that was a little bit more heavy, you would wanna do a bit better of a job masking this out. All right, very cool. So as far as like look goes, we're, um, we're pretty much there. We just need to make sure it blends a little bit more. And to do this, I'm gonna open up the blend if dialog because I'm gonna tell this pattern to not be as visible where the underlying layer is lighter and that's gonna look like where the like sun hits those layers. You won't, you're not gonna see the pattern as much cause it's just gonna look like sunlight. So we're gonna double click here and I'm gonna hold alt or option and I'm gonna go from the right to the left and basically it's just gonna make the pattern less visible where the underlying layers are lighter. There we go. And you can even change your opacity here. So like if you want that to be more or less visible, you can do that right here as well. All right. Very cool. So basically that was the whole idea, guys. We put the pattern in there and then just use kind of like these defining lines to figure out where we're gonna make things go up and go down and things like that. But to me, that it looks great. It really does look like that pattern is on the dress and you can use basically any pattern you can find on the internet or any pattern you can make and you can put this on any piece of clothing using these exact same steps. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. If you enjoy what we do here, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave us a comment down below. If there's anything you'd like to learn in Photoshop or photography, that's how we come up with our ideas for these episodes. Just tell us what you want. I wanna learn to have a two-headed dog in Photoshop and then we'll do that because that's how we make our episodes. Thanks again, guys. And if this was too complex or if you guys need to brush her up on Photoshop, be sure to check out our Photoshop 101 Pro tutorial. It's awesome. It's three and a half hours. goes through every single thing, every tool, every dialog box, every little, like showing you the layers and layer masks of Photoshop. It just goes through everything, making it like basically catching you up so you don't have to worry about the program anymore. You can just get to creating awesome stuff in Photoshop. Thanks again, guys, and I'll learn you later. Peace. Wow, Aaron. I'm so much happier with this pattern on my dress. <laughs> yeah, that happened.